Hey Phoenix fam, what's poppin'? In today's video we're gonna open some mystery boxes. I have some mystery boxes here from Novridge, from AliExpress. I, I didn't remember what I ordered. And Humorex, Amazon, a bunch of airsoft stores. So let's do it. Let's open them up. Okay, let's start with the most obvious, with the biggest one, with the Humorex one. This puppy is heavy. Bunch of material. And what is this on the bottom? What could that be? Okay, we have some BBs. Six millimeter. What's that? 0 0.20 gram bio BBs. And oh, look at that. No compromise. What is that gonna be? The new Humorex slash Elite Force. MP7, AEG, in the Gen 2. Oh, it's even a plastic. It's wrapped in plastic. Wrapped in plastic. Oh, dang. So what is this? This is the new Humorex MP7 AEG in the Generation 2. So after the first generation that I already have, they had some problems. We're gonna make a whole video only dedicated to that. This is the generation two where they fixed a lot of issues that people were having. I luckily did not. You guys can have a look. This is the one side. Oh, it looks so dope. It fits great. And then the other side, you can see the markings. Okay, here it says license trademark with some iron sides. And then of course, we can go like this. Whoop, here we go. You're gonna take this off and this is where the battery goes. Amazing, HK MP7 A1 AEG Gen 2. Okay, let's see what else is in the box. Oh, only a mag and that's it. No cleaning rod, no nothing, but ooh, yeah, that sounds great. Of course, you have to be very careful if you insert this magazine, this little nipple has to be inside. This is the follower that tells the uh, replica that the magazine is empty. If you don't want to break the nipple off, you have to put it inside and then you can insert it into the magazine. Just look at this, it looks amazing. Just a little cutout. I think this is also the perfect cutout for an MP7, uh, for an MP5 plastic. Then we have a nice operating instructions. No one needs that. And then this, more package material. And then we have something new. This is the Elite Force LiPo battery. So they're coming out with their own battery line, specially fitted to be used in the MP7 because battery space in this tiny little compartment is really hard to put in. One that fits good, one that fits super tightly. If you just have one cable in the wrong direction, you can't really close it and cable gets pinched. So I'm really happy that they're coming out with their own LiPo battery. This is a 7.4 volt 20C, so 7.4 LiPo. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there's plenty of space. You can see how easily it falls in because usually on the game field, it's such a hassle to get this done. Like you can't do it on the field. You have to go off the field and go in the staging area and properly put that in because there's a little magnet on the little nipple that tells the MP7 that there's no BBs inside so you can't shoot, which is actually cool. You have to get used to it a little bit that you have like an empty mag indicator. Sometimes you just like panic mode and think your thing is broken or the battery is empty, but it actually works. So this, so we have to hold out the slide release and then we can uh, actually fire that puppy. Sounds great. They changed some of the internals so that this reliably now works with a 7.4 LiPo, but of course we're gonna have an in-depth look on that in a different video. But for now it's only this. Seems good. And then with the LiPo battery, we also have a LiPo checker. That is great. I'm gonna put that on right now. This tells you if the voltage of your battery is getting too low and it warns you. So that's very great that you don't burn your LiPo battery because <laughs> four little thingies 
and this is where you insert it into the battery. It says ground battery one, two, and three. So this is a two, uh, it's is 20C, so there's 7.4 volt LiPo, so it has two cells. So we use the ground, the battery one, and the battery two. Okay, we have a loud noise, and then we can see that the battery is not that fully charged anymore, so we should actually do that before we use it. You can leave that on while you play, and then if the voltage drops too low of your LiPo, it gives you an alarm sound, so that's great. A bunch of mini parts. So what do we have here? Just another magazine for the MP7. This is an outer barrel extension for my HPA system because if I want to add a tracer unit to my HPA Mark 18, the inner barrel just pokes out just a tiny little bit so the tracer doesn't recognize the BBs. So this is yeah one inch outer barrel extensions with the correct threads. So I can thread this on and extend the outer barrel just a little bit so the tracer can go on here. And then this one is a conversion kit kit for the MP7 so I can use a tracer on here. 12 millimeter to 14 millimeter conversion thread so I can use this with a tracer unit as well. Next up we have Novridge. Sweet. Oh sweet. Minimal chest rig in green. This is how the packaging looks like. It looks really awesome with the big logo in the front. It says minimal chest rig right here. A low profile 5.56 pouch in green. Obviously with their self-made laser cut which looks super dope. And this is Tactical green belt also in green. Obviously I want my stuff in green. Then we have universal small radio pouch in green. Another adjustable 556 magazine pouch. Okay, this is like a taco. A little Kydex inserted magazine pouch. This looks, this feels great already, awesome. And this is another low profile one and another adjustable one. Okay, so great. So we have a chest rig basically with a belt, a small radio pouch and four M4 magazine pouches. Really special with this chest rig is, is that it gets closed in the front, which is new for me. I never had a chest rig that works like basically a bra. You have this buckle here in the front. It undoes really easily. You have a little pinching motion and then you can just, it just snaps back inside. So it's really easy to put it on and take it off in theory. Not sized right now. It's more like a belly rig right now. Chest rig should be a chest rig and not a belly rig. So it should be up here on your chest and not on your belly. This is where the magazine goes in. Perfect for M4 or 556, I guess. Can also hold a K Max. And then there's a rubberized side here. Feels really great to give it a little bit more grip that they don't slide out, which I don't like on the uh, basically the AliExpress versions of these. Is they're super slippery, like your stuff can still fly out. And then obviously we have to molly that through the uh, laser cut and put that here. I guess I'm gonna go fast pouch, fast pouch, then the other one, the other one, and then the radio pouch on the left side. Open the entire pouch up. That is super cool. And then you can put your bow thing or whatever it is just in here. Let's try like that. And then close it around it. And then it has a little bungee cord that goes over the top. Obviously this is a little big now, but I think the example stands. Obviously to get out of this, it opens in the front, so it's really easy. You just pop out the little buckle system, that's awesome. And then you just take it off like a bra, if you have ever seen one. Well, and then you can see, maybe you can see me still through it, but this is super breathable. You can just tell how much holes is in there, which is great because I tend to sweat a lot, especially under plate carriers, I'm just freaking drenched. You can tell with all their stuff they're coming out, they're making it very breathable for the airsoft player. I really enjoy that, what they're doing. They're really putting a thought in how to make it better for the player on the field. And this is one, one, one version. 
this is one thing they absolutely doing correct. It's like, it's a little bit wind and the air can travel through. It's gonna be no problem even with gloves. So here a little difference between the adjustable 556 and the low profile 556. So the adjustable basically has like a kydex insert. So it's really easy to reinsert a magazine if you, if you want to. Really easy out in, that's what she said. And then the low profile one is more like an elastic one. So it's really snug. If you look at from the side, it's really snug. It holds a magazine perfectly with its elastic structure. And then once you take the magazine out, it's harder to reinsert, but you have this very flush design, which makes it really low profile, especially when if you're lying on the ground, it makes your chest being even further to the ground. Or if you have to squeeze through somewhere, uh, this is really, Great if you want something really low profile. You can see from the side how the profile is actually different. So I mollied on the first uh, magazine uh, pouch and you can just feel the quality is great. It feels nice, it's a laser cut. You can see through it. It's just the overall, yeah, like haptic, the feeling is great. It's not something super cheap from AliExpress. Sometimes you can tell if you have these super cheap materials in your hand, but this feels nice. This feels very durable and you have so many customization abilities here. You can put stuff everywhere. Even on the shoulder strap, you have laser cut. If you want to route like here, this is for a PTT to just hold it right here or right here or right here. Wherever you want to put stuff, you can put stuff. Like for a sniper roll, this can be really good. Then you maybe not need the uh, M4 mag pouches, but there's different ones for your sniper rifle, for pistol pouches, whatever. Uh, you can um, yeah, customize this however you want. And then here also we have a giant tactical belt. Yeah, it has a giant buckle, very heavy, this uh, metal here. So if you wanna hook in a lanyard or whatever, you can do that. And then obviously adjust the size to your liking. But very nice little rigger's belt. Then let's open up this big one. You guys know I've been a little bit on a journey recently. And that is my very own, you guessed it, <laughs> paintball mask. This is my very own Speed QB, Speedsoft inspired loadout I'm gonna build up and this is the HK Army SLR paintball mask in black. I started to play a little bit of uh, Speedsoft and then obviously we had the big Speed QB Germany championship uh, competition and I didn't have my own gear. I didn't, I was lenting a mask and it's not always so nice. It's actually cooler to have your own. This is now my very own HK. SLR and it looks amazing. This is gonna be it. So let's try it on. Enough. Oh yeah, it's super sleek. And yeah, obviously I just need my own stuff a little bit. And so this was the first step to get my own mask. If I wanna ever play that, especially in the Heldenhalle, for example, if you wanna play this or at any kind of speed QB championship tournament, whatever, these are mandatory. This is not recommended. Full face protection is required. I actually like it. It's very sleek. It's not really big. Somehow in my memory, they were a lot bigger than tinted glasses. And then maybe we can like fives, like all the crazy speed QB for the culture guys. They have their crazy stickers on here and even on the lens. So maybe we can customize this a little bit with some flamey orange. Then I actually have arm shoulders from back in the days when I used to play some semi-professional uh, paintball, but ATSB 5s were so nice to give me as old knee pads. Those are dye knee pads because yeah, if you play indoors, if you play in the Heldenhalle, the, the ground is really hard and you need to slide, you need to go low quickly. And I played there once in jeans without knee protection and it hurt, man. I don't want to do that again, so I have some knee protection. Let's do that together. Ah, so satisfying. Looks good. Looks good, I would say. Maybe like that. Ear protection on the side, obviously. The mouth, everything, the whole face is covered. And then yeah, those tend to never fog, ever. Going with the paintball mask, obviously I need something to mount my cameras with. So I 
had to order it as well. This is the HK Army GoPro adapter for paintball masks. So they go on top of the lens where there's a, like a little slots where the heat can travel out. And this is where this grips in. It's a yeah, goggle camera mount for yeah my first person view GoPro attachment basically. So I can film stuff even if I'm speed soften. So this is absolutely necessary if you want to do some stuff on the YouTube. If you want uh, a little rebate code from paintball.de, here you go. Then we have here some stuff from AliExpress. I have literally no idea what this even is because I ordered it such a long time ago. And you never know, it's with, <laughs> with AliExpress everything is a little... It's a gummy banana, I thought I had to order it. I thought this, this could make for a very, very funny knife kill. It's a banana kill. You could even throw it and then people would slip or something, I don't know. I ordered these from AliExpress. Those are BB shields in 30 millimeter diameters. They're supposed to be plexiglass little plates with a sticky adhesive on them. So you can stick them on your red dot on the front or on the back or wherever you want to on your scope and they protect your um, optics from BBs. I wanted to try them out and see if they work. Maybe I could find another cool product that actually does something for me, right? And then it came with a really cool little poker chip. Let's, let's leave it here, right here. This stuff is dusty as hell. Some speed loaders off of AliExpress. They were extremely cheap. Uh, they were definitely cheaper than in any other store I could find, but they needed now four weeks to arrive, I think. But they're made from the little better plastic, so they feel a little heavier. I love these small ones because I like to have one on my uh, belt, actually. It's right here always, and then sometimes I even have one in, the, uh, in my chest rig because for the SSX 303, for example, I only have two magazines and then I can just refill the magazines on the go really easily. You can never have enough speed loaders and they were kind of... Ah, this is something Airsoft unrelated. This is a little reflective tape that reflects uh, light from cars and stuff and this goes on my bike. But if you want to put it on your loadout and everyone sees you at night, why not? <laughs> and then we have a little bit of fun stuff as I get bombarded on AliExpress with extremely weird stuff. I couldn't hold back and got a bunch of little hands. He looked in. This is just the stupid stuff I order in AliExpress. Don't ask me why. And then last but not least, we have the sand grips from my friend Jasper from Copper and Brass. Those are the sand grips for the SSP-18 but you can also get them for the SSX-303 or for some like various different stuff. And they just look like this. It's little sandpaper that basically you glue onto your grip and they make them insanely grippy in your baby hands. It's perfect for air soften, but also for your, for your real steel stuff. Your stuff gets really grippy. It's not gonna fly out on the field or whatever. This is amazing stuff. He does those and a lot of different merchandise you can see in his whole catalog. He does like oh, all this stuff. And then I have a little uh, thank you thing from him. I have a little rebate code, 10%. If you want some sand grips, go get them now. First person gonna get 10% off their uh, order from the, some sand grips from Copper and Brass. I hope you enjoyed this little video, something a little bit different. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have some questions about some certain stuff and I hope we just like hang out a little bit and do some crazy stuff. And now, I don't know, go uh, watch a different video with like other weird stuff I do, like uh, use my little uh, peen uh, pistol, the Cox 69 and shoot some people in the face. Just go watch a different gameplay video now. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button.